This is Kathy Beal of EmpowermentUnlimited.net with Astro Insight for the week of April 8th, 2019. Oh, we're feeling it now. The Aries new moon at the end of last week erupted within each of us. And now this week just pushes, pushes, pushes us in all kinds of directions. Some of them slamming into some structure, but nonetheless really, really pushing us internally, externally, every which way imaginable. There is a really nice aspect framing it all that may soften some of your experience of it, but nonetheless, you will be feeling like maybe at times a punching bag, maybe at times like punching someone out, maybe at times like just breaking everything around you. Yes, yes, that kind of week. But here's the softening framework. The week starts with the two planets of love merging in Pisces, the sign of spiritual love and interconnectedness. That would be Venus, ruler of everything we value, love, money, beauty, creativity, kind of like the worldly version of love, and Neptune, the font of higher love of inspiration, of transcendence. This is really starry-eyed energy, kind of like in the monkeys when Davy Jones would see the new girl, whatever the episode was, they would lock eyes and then twinkle, 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 their eyes would just become stars. There could be some of that going on this week. This kind of energy makes it possible to perceive the divine in everything, to act with great compassion, to discover a source of forgiveness within you that you maybe didn't think was there, to love people in spite of their faults, to love them because of their faults. It's a terrific energy for inspiration and creativity and coming up with magical solutions to all kinds of things. And if nothing else, it could lead you into a well-needed time out or a sensation that you're on vacation all week and just watching this other stuff happening. This is a subtle influence, but it is a powerful influence, powerful like water, which will eventually reshape anything that it touches, a fact well known to anyone who has lived through a flood. Venus and Neptune are making a super conjunction on the 9th, which means that they are meeting both by degree of the zodiac and by declination, which is a technical way of looking at how far something is from the equator. So it's kind of a double whammy of magic. And if you're really into magic with or without a K on the end of it, you could find this exceedingly useful. And as this energy puts gauze or Vaseline over the lens through which we are viewing all of reality, we get pushed, we get pummeled, we get stretched. The sun hits the wall that was looming at the Aries new moon last Friday, and we are forced to act like adults and put structure in some way on a development. It could be commitment, acting responsibly. It could be being rerouted. It could be finding the limit of what we're capable of doing. Communication and information fly, fly, fly afterwards. We might be on data-seeking missions. We might have all kinds of people just talking, talking, talking. And there might be an impulse or an inclination to push against some of the lovey-dovey, let's all live together in peace vibes that are imbuing the air. Or maybe there is something that is demanding that we act on these vibes and find a way to implement them in our lives. The real focus of the pressure, the real target of the pressure the real ultimate effect of the pressure is our self. Isn't that the way it always goes? By the weekend, the sun is in a demand for action with Pluto, which I'm increasingly seeing as the phoenix point. We're forced to deal with something deep within us. Maybe it's a phobia that comes up or some obsessive thinking 
Perhaps we simply engage in our own Phoenix act and throw ourselves onto the fire and come out of it regenerated, reborn, stripped down, purified, clarified. This could, of course, be simply on the way that we view ourselves, but there may be massive shape shifting going on in everyone. Notice how many people you have seen who are engaged in long-term exercise and weight loss programs. People who have made drastic changes to their appearances lately, reflecting incredible reawakening and emerging on the inside. And this all leads to a far greater expansiveness in our outlook on what's possible for our lives. The stripping down makes it possible for us to fly further, higher, freer, more buoyantly. At the very least, you will see your own view of what is possible start to expand and blossom and open up because of the deep regeneration that you have gone through. It occurs to me as I am recording this that on the very day of the Venus-Neptune conjunction, a film is being shown for the first time that is a salvaging of a remarkable and bizarre project that Terry Gilliam of Monty Python's Flying Circus attempted years ago and had to scuttle about Don Quixote. And a lot of the footage that has been tied up for a long, long time now makes its way in a complete reworking titled, provocatively, The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. This may end up being emblematic for each of us, salvaging and making some kind of new art and magic out of something from the past that didn't quite work out. Homing Thought of the Week. Choose Love. Song of the Week. It's an oldie, Take a Chance on Me by ABBA. And the image of the week is stretching, 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 stretching a balloon and then blowing it up. You'll find several guided visualizations for working with all of these energies in the shop at my site, most recently released, Working with Pluto, which is a gentle and easy way to harness all of the deep clearing and regenerative impulses that are flowing through all of reality right now. You'll also find a lot of resources in general at the toolkit I have for the month of April at my site, empowermentunlimited.net, where you can sign up for my mailing list and book a session with me. And I've got bonus Astro Insight up at my YouTube channel, The Professional Aquarian. I'll put a link below and also in the toolkit. Talk to you next week.